Hey everyone, it's Asia Dang and today is budget video day. Now I actually thought that this video would be very much different because in the beginning of the month I was having again like incredible anxiety um, about money to the point where I couldn't sleep or I would wake up in the middle of the night um, because I was so anxious and that hasn't happened to me since before um, I started my debt-free journey. So it's definitely been a weird month. Um, I think kind of just the responsibilities that I have now are giving me anxiety. Yeah, it was a kind of like an emotionally very scary, scary early part of the month, which is weird because as you'll see, I kind of like kicked ass on my uh, sinking funds and my savings fund. So you would think that I would have been happy with that, but I think I'm just getting, I think just adulting is just really hitting me hard these days. But let's just quickly go over um, my budget for last month and then this month, because there are definitely some things that I want to talk about. Most of you guys actually liked the usage of percentages in my budget starting from last month. And a few of you didn't, you guys missed the numbers, but also like um, I give you clues as to how much I make a month. It's not like I'm just giving you percentages and stuff. I am actually telling you how much I paid towards savings and I'm giving you clues here and there. So if you're, if you're really trying to be a nosy fuck and you want to know what I made, this past month, then you can do the math. I don't have to do the math for you anymore. It's not my responsibility. So if you really do miss the numbers, just get your calculator out and figure out what the percentages mean. And uh, there, there you go, problem solved. Brian actually did a budget like a couple days ago and I didn't even mention it. And I was so proud of my baby, but what he used was actually something that I didn't even consider using throughout the two years of me doing this. And he used um, numbers. He used numbers on his um, iPad Pro and he built himself a budget. This is my budget. But I was like, oh my God, why did that not even occur to me to do? Anyways, so if you're looking to uh, like start doing graphs and stuff for yourself, do numbers. I contributed a total of $16,000 to my sinking funds and uh, savings funds this year or this month. I think I have student loan PTSD and I am not even joking. That might sound really funny and you're free to laugh, but I seriously think that I have student loan post-traumatic stress disorder because I am just so afraid that I'm going to be broke again. And it's crippling me. Like I did not sleep for about two weeks. And that also has to do with, and it's actually, and it's to the point where it's affecting me so much and this might be TMI, but my body is feeling so much stress for this student loan PTSD that I'm actually late on my period. And don't worry, I'm not pregnant. I've taken like four pregnancy tests and been, been to the hospital and double checked there. But that's how much my body is reacting to this entire thing. And it's so stupid because I am no longer in debt. I finally have a positive net worth, which has never happened to me at all in 32, 33 years of life. But the fear of being broke again and having a negative balance freaked me the fuck out. And I don't know what in my mind is happening this month because I've been debt free for the past couple months, but maybe it's because I finally got a lot of the paychecks that I was waiting for that it's like, okay, now that I have this money, how do I not screw it up again? So I think I did, I think some of that is stemming from once these pages are done, then, I mean, of course I'm thinking like far ahead, but now I'm thinking of buying a house and then that's giving me anxiety because I don't know where I want to buy a house. Like, cause to me, I'm, I'm already in my thirties. So this isn't going to be a starter house. This is going to be kind of like the house where I would 
start to have a baby in. So it's like, okay, well, where do you want to raise a kid? Do you want to raise it in LA? Not really. And plus, like, I can't really afford LA or do I want to go to Brian's hometown in Houston because I can easily get a house, we can easily get a house there, but I don't necessarily want to raise my kid there. I would love to move back home to Hawaii, but I can definitely not afford a house in Hawaii. So I think that is giving me anxiety a lot. Um, and I don't know, I mean, is that rational? Is that a rational fear? I don't know because I have no one to talk to about this right now. Um, but something that I did do to help ease the tension um, in my body was I paid for an I paid my entire year of health insurance. That is something I did. So if tomorrow I I'm totally fucked for some reason, then at least I know health wise I'm I'm covered, which you know makes me feel better. And then I also paid for my car insurance, and. Um, that's basically it. Oh, and I paid um, $2,000 towards my Invisalign, which I actually should be wearing right now. Which, by the way, I'm doing an entire video. And I think also my stress is, is dealing with the fact that I am working on like six videos in this month. And that's like, not like six individual videos, but six long-term videos where I have to kind of vlog. Like I'm telling you this because I'm also, I'm doing a video about my experience with Invisalign and it, that is just stressing me out as well because that's six additional videos on top of what I do normally every month. So it's just kind of like stressing me out. This is tray two week, week three and ooh, that's tight. That happened and then you guys are like, I can't believe you're spending so much money on a destination wedding. And I'm like, yes, I know. But we had some good news. Well, not totally good news, but Brian's actually not able to make the wedding because he has, um, it's Hip Hop International and he has to be there to judge. So my girlfriend and I, who's also going to the wedding, are going to split everything down the middle. So that trip is already paid for. And because I'm not flying with Brian anymore, I can fly standby for free. So that's actually turning out very well. Not that I would not love to have Brian there, but not having him there is saving me a lot of money. And before you ask why isn't Brian paying for all of this, it's for me, if I'm inviting someone to something like a wedding where he wouldn't have otherwise been invited to, I just think it's unfair for me to ask him to pay for half. I don't know, that's just my thinking. So I was paying for everything myself, which was what I wanted to do. But now that he's not going, I get half my money back. And another bonus is, I for some reason I thought my Invisalign was $7,000, but it is $6,000. And that also includes, obviously, I'm only gonna do Invisalign for seven months, but it includes all of the trays and then it'll include teeth whitening and then I have a chip tooth if you guys haven't ever noticed that it's on my front right side my front right tooth it's gonna that cost includes fixing that chip and then getting some I forget what it's called like ionic treatment to my front teeth that have kind of like these white dots on them so that's what that covers and yeah Health insurance is paid for for the whole month. That makes me feel good. Car insurance is done. Renters is saved. Bluehost, Squarespace, Dropbox, Adobe Premiere, that's all saved. Wedding, paid for in full because, hey. And then Invisalign, um, I owe $4,000. Yep, Invisalign, I owe $4,000, but we have a payment plan, which is $500 every month, which is very reasonable for me. But you know me, I don't like owing people money, so... Once I, um, I think maybe once I add another $10,000 to my savings fund, I'm gonna just pay off the Invisalign. But right now that um, most of my sinking funds are done, I think I'm gonna concentrate heavily on my savings fund for the month of, what well, month are we in? March. What else did I spend money on? I spent a lot of money on food this month because I took myself out on a couple dates if you guys don't know this, I'm a huge proponent of eating by yourself in public. 
I really dig it. And for those of you who might think that it's a very scary thing, I have this to say to you. No one gives a shit about you. And that might be a little aggressive for it to hear, but I feel like a fear is that people think that when they go to eat someplace or just go any place by themselves that people are judging you. But the reality is that people are so concerned with their own goddamn lives that they honestly do not give a shit about you. You know, <laughs> that might make you feel a little better. But I went, I took myself out on a couple um, solo dates and um, yeah, so my food budget was definitely a lot. I don't know, man. I've I've um, been watching a lot of stuff recently about homelessness in Los Angeles. And I live downtown. I live right up the street from Skid Row. I go through Skid Row every day. And if you don't know what Skid Row is, it's kind of just a block or a street in downtown LA where it's like tent city. And it's obviously always been a concern to me because I'm just that type of person that cares about people living on the street. But I've been watching a lot of investigative pieces about the homelessness issue and it is just so complex. But the reason why I bring that up is that I look at my food budget for the month and then I watch these things about people who um, have food stamps for their families of four and six, I'm eating, th I spend three times as much on food for myself and sometimes for Brian than they get in government assistance. And that's actually making me feel pretty horrible about myself. So I think a good, um, the one of the things that I was watching, I believe she said that this woman gets um, food stamps for her, her sister and her two kids. So for four people and the food stamp is about, I think she said $600 a month. And I think maybe a good exercise for me to do is to um, see how much it is for, um, you know, a family of two on food stamps and then maybe kind of live my life off of that amount for a month. And that might seem super petty, like, Asia, <laughs> you shouldn't be spending that much money on food anyways. But honestly, I just really love good food, and I've been so busy this month that I have not had time to cook. So I've been eating out a lot, and that's just how the cookie crumbled for me this month. And I know that I spent a lot of money on food, but it's not like I spend money on clothes. It's not like I spend money on, like, shopping. Food is my weakness. However, now that I've just been paying very, very close attention to th things in the news lately, um, I think that might be a good exercise for myself. Um, parking and Lyft. I've actually been saving a lot of money on Lyft this month because you know those Lyft scooters? I've been using those instead of actually calling for a car lift. And um, I know that in LA or in, yeah, in LA, the scooters are kind of like a love-hate relationship with people in the community. I feel like the older generation um, thinks it's kind of a nuisance, but people in me, like me, or I think people in neighborhoods like mine really, really do love it because parking here is impossible and um, you don't necessarily go very far. So if I can stay out of my car or stay out of a car, I prefer to do that. And um, the Lyft scooters have been actually very, very nice. It takes me a little while to get places. I have to give myself a little bit more time, but instead of like an $8 car ride, it's a $3 scooter. So that being said, if you do ride a scooter, please be responsible with it and don't throw it in the middle of the fucking street like a, like a, like a bad person. Park it somewhere out of the way, park it nicely on a sidewalk, just like be a responsible human being for God's sakes. Okay, what else? Um, dogs. So again, this whole veterinary situation, I do not understand. Someone please explain to me why one person charges one, one rate and the other person charges the other rate. So yesterday, um, if you guys don't remember, a couple months ago, I think 
either November, December of last year, I uh, rescued a dog. I named him Boomer. Um, and I had to find, I needed to get him his shots. I needed to get him neutered and all of that stuff. And uh, one of the rescues that I work with closely, Animal Hope and Wellness, suggested that I go to this place, this vet hospital called um, North Figueroa Animal Hospital. It's about 20 minutes from where I live. And of course, I listen to a rescue because they are obviously in the business of trying to save money when it comes to their intakes, their dogs. So I was like, okay, cool. I'm going to give it a shot. And... Um, they were fantastic. I really enjoyed it. Um, they don't take any appointments. You have to go, you have to like walk in and that allows them to take as many people as they can in a day. So it's a very like chaotic environment, but the vet place is very clean. Everyone is very nice. Um, the head vet, who I actually don't really, I don't know his name, but he is very, very, very nice. Anyways, Boomer was recently adopted, not recently, but Boomer has been adopted, by the way. He lives with his daddy in um, uh, Seattle, I believe, where he's he works at Amazon, so yay for Boomer. But I needed my dogs to get their uh, shots updated, and I wanted to get their teeth cleaned, so I decided to go to North Figueroa Animal Hospital to um, see what was up. And where is it? Now, if you don't remember, last year, Brian and I saved up $1,600 for both of our dogs, so $800 each, for them to get their teeth cleaned. And I prefer them to go under anesthesia so they can get a really good deep look at what's in their mouths. And um, I don't, I feel like, especially with Luke, the non-anesthesia teeth cleaning would 100% scar him. So I prefer to just get it all done in one really intense go. So that place that charged us $1,800 was right down the street. North Figueroa Animal Hospital for all of their shots, including um, Bordetella, rabies, all that stuff for that. So that's 10 shots together for two dogs plus one deep cleaning under anesthesia for one dog because he said Luke didn't need it. Total $360. I do not understand. How can one vet for one dog quote me $800 for a teeth cleaning and North Figueroa Animal Hospital Dentistry Canine $87. Uh, dentistry $87, fluids $15, anesthesia $60, uh, canine injection for, I don't know what that is, $60, plus meds, plus again, their vet visits, plus 10 shots for Luke and Levi, $360. Those assholes, I had to pay $1,800, no, $1,600 for dentistry. Someone explain to me what the difference is. I do not understand. And plus, um, what I really like too is that I had only been to that vet once and he recognized me and he thought I was like um, a dog rescuer, which I guess I am, but not officially. And he gave me a bag of goodies to keep in my car um, for dogs that I see on the street to rescue. Like, how nice is that? I, I like, it just like, it blows my mind. And when I had Boomer, the vet down the street from me for neutering quoted me $700 and I was able for Boomer to get his neutering and all of his shots done for $300. I do not understand. Anyways, that is my rant. Would I go to um, North Fig for like a really intense issue? I wouldn't, but for shots, for teeth cleaning, for spay and neuter, 100%. I recommend that place. That's actually the only place in LA I recommend. I mean, you guys know in, B in San Diego, I like B Street Vet, but North Fig, I actually was thinking about writing a Yelp review for them. I never write Yelp reviews. That is how much I appreciate them. So if someone can explain to me what the difference is, because that's that's not even a little di difference. That is a drastic difference. Let me know in the comments. Anyways, also, um, 
in March, I'm going back home to Hawaii for a week. So I had to get the boys their rover sitter and that was $300 for a week, which is half as much as, again, if I were to take them down the street in my neighborhood. So I love Rover. I love North, uh, North Fig Vet Hospital. And now it's time to move on. Oh, so you guys have been noticing that my thumbnail game has improved. And that's because I have my first hire. I've been working with um, Elaine and I have to tell you how, how I got connected with her is someone in my team, my management team. I don't know what she was Googling, but she found, I guess, Elaine's portfolio. And as a class project, Elaine had to kind of develop branding for um, one of their YouTubers and she did me and I was like, wow, her stuff is so cute. Let's see if we can work together. And she's the one that's been responsible for my thumbnails. So, and the graphs that you see in these videos. So definitely give her um, a virtual high five um, because I know you guys love the new thumbnails. I for sure love the new thumbnails. And if you want to hire her, I'll put her information in the um, description box, but don't hire her to where she's too busy to not do my shit. Anyways, because of that, um, from now on, my equipment budget for the month will be much higher than it normally is. However, uh, in February, equipment, it was still only, not only, that's actually quite a lot, 8% um, of my budget. And that's basically it. I did actually buy a few pieces of clothes this month. So look at me. Hey, I'm trying to do a video here. I bought two pairs of jeans and uh, from Reformation, which actually aren't very expensive. They were only $97 a pair, which obviously is not cheap, but I thought they would be about $250 for some reason. So I was very happy with my purchases. And I also bought um, some really cute uh, sleepwear <laughs> because that's the kind of person I am is that I spend money on not outside people clothes, but what I sleep in. However, very much worth it. Tomorrow, I am going to Vegas for one night. I got a hotel on Hotel Tonight for $58 and I'm flying there for free because I'm flying standby. So look at me being a travel budget queen. As you can tell, I am already in much better moods than I told you guys I was earlier this month, but we'll see. We all know I'm an emotional wreck, but I'm hoping that now that I'm beginning to see some financial stability in here that my anxiety won't be as crazy as it has been. Um, speaking of financial stability, I don't know if you guys watched the video, but I am working with um, First Aid Beauty to pay off $1 million worth of your guys' student loans. Of course, this is a giveaway and of course there are parameters and I'm so, so sorry if you are unable to qualify because you graduated a couple years, years ago, um, but I didn't make the rules. Hopefully this initiative is such a success that they'll open up the parameters next time. But if you graduated undergraduate at a four year accredited university between January, 2018 and August, 2020, you um, can apply for the first A Beauties Fab Aid initiative where all you have to do is literally fill out the application and there's going to be a bunch of winners and First Day Beauty will pay off your student loans up to $100,000. So with the idea being that First Day Beauty has a slew of products that kind of set your face up for a clean slate and they want to do that with your life post uh, graduation to start your life on a clean slate. So that's really cool. Um, let's look at the video. I actually got a lot of dislikes on this video, which is surprising, but a lot of you are just like really angry that you can't qualify. But um, I mean, that's just the way the cookie crumbles. I'm sorry that you don't qualify, but um, oh yeah, it's at a 92%, which is kind of a bummer, guys. Like you can't be happy for other people for this opportunity. It doesn't make sense to me, but anyways, um, I'll go ahead and link 
all those links if you want to apply in the description box. That's it for my budget. Thank you so much for watching. Um, oh yeah, I, I meant to do my um, Postmates video, but how I would drive Postmates for a week. But um, I honestly didn't really want to in February, so that'll be coming this month. And I'm honestly not looking forward to it because I realize I just really hate driving in cars. So I don't know what I signed myself up for. Anyways, um, yeah, that's it. <laughs> I'm Asia Dang. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you soon. Bye.